Hey you, how's it going? My name is Ruby Price and today I thought I would take a revised look at my record collection. So some of you may remember, but towards the back end of 2018 I made a video basically discussing and showing off my record collection at the time and it was fun and like I got to talk about why I love vinyl and stuff like that. There's a link to that video in this corner. And I've already explained it in that video, you know, why I love vinyl and what got me into vinyl. Um, but since then I very much expanded my collection, there's a lot more complete discographies or, you know, my vinyl collection has sort of rounded itself and there's enough there now for me to justify making an updated version of that video, talking about the new things and also showing off the old things as well, but mostly just the, the new things. And also this is at a time when, you know, a lot of the artists that I'm interested in aren't in the run-up to releasing something new, um, I don't have any current active pre-orders. So I know that what I show you now is going to remain in-date information for quite a while. Before I get going, common question. Have you got a record collection? How many have you got? What's your favourite? Why is it your favourite? And is there something that you really want but you just can't find? Let me know in the comments below. We'll have a chat. Cool. So without further ado, here's my record collection from A to Z. And then some singles and EPs as well. So first up we have... Art to Monkeys, whatever people say I am, that's why I'm not. When I made the previous video, I talked about how I feel as though everybody should own at least one Art to Monkeys album on vinyl. At the time, I owned two. Now I own four, and you know, no collection would be complete without, you know, album one. Um, this is a reprint. It's on black vinyl. Um, ooh. And it's a bit dusty, because I haven't played it in a while. However, you know, it's black and it's heavyweight, and it's really nice, and... I do enjoy listening to this album on this, you know, format. It was an album that was made for this format. This album very much shaped my band playing music taste. For those of you who were unaware, I was in a band in high school and one of the first like, songs that we learnt as a band was I Bet You Look Good On The Dance Floor. And this is, that was basically what got me into Active Monkeys. And I can play pretty much the entire discography of Active Monkeys on guitar now because of learning and listening to this album. If you watched the 2018 video, you know this next one. Arctic Monkey's favourite worst nightmare. You know, it falls out again. I think all my art, no, it doesn't. It's, it's on standard um, black heavyweight vinyl. You know, and I've made my thoughts clear about this one. You know, this is one of my favourite albums. They took what was on the first album and they made it better. Another newer edition, Arctic Monkey's Humbug. Uh, this one again falls out, but this one, this corner, this side's blank. But yeah, this is an album. Um, even the CD version of this album feels like it was made to be a record because it's basically got this as a CD size case, it's got this as a sleeve for the CD, and then, you know, it's got the CD. But no, this is the vinyl version, and actually, it's quite possibly my favourite Art to Monkeys record. But yeah, that's Humbug, an album that I didn't use to appreciate as much as I should have done, and now arguably over-appreciate. And the final Art to Monkeys album, also seen in the 2018 video, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. Folds out. This side actually has stuff in it, and it's, uh, you know, all the lyrics and stuff. And it's just really cool, because it's like, you know, this is on tracing paper, and you can see underneath it. Like, there's clearly been some thought gone into, you know, the actual lyric stuff, which is really, you know, nice to see. You know, it's, it's the kind of thing you don't really get with CDs, because there's just so much more of a product here. Um, but the thing that makes this one special is it's the HMV pre-order, so it's on clear vinyl. Yeah. Moving on, we have a record that eluded me for so long, as it is Never Happy Ever After, the debut record of As It Is. This, um, this is really hard to get. Very rare. I think there was only, um, maybe a thousand copies, versions printed. They moved on very quickly from, I say this album, they moved on very quickly from this version of this record because, you know, we got a deluxe edition very shortly afterwards. And, you know, the deluxe edition's all right, but they didn't do a vinyl of it. They just stopped and, you know, yeah. So, uh, yeah, never happy ever after. And it's on this really bright orange, like, vinyl, you know, and it's really, it's really nice. It's a nice cut, it's a nice shade of orange. Um, I certainly prefer the darker bit, at least. Older as it is logo, and just, yeah, I really like it. So now the only vinyl thing that I'm missing from as it is that predates this record is this Mind of Mine EP, which is really, that's hard to get. But I think there are a lot of people that overvalue it. So this was the first record I ever owned. 
okay by as it is, I figured if I'm buying vinyl, I'm gonna buy my favourite album at the time. And the first record I ever owned was okay by as it is, and it's in this really nice green colour. But I do think that if this hadn't been my first vinyl record, I probably wouldn't have continued being as invested in vinyl as I am, just because of how much this album means to me. And having it on vinyl just sort of meant that I made that symbiotic relationship between vinyl and music and me and just loving it and oh yeah this is a good album by the way you should listen to it oh man so the great depression by as it is double gatefold i very jokingly said that the color scheme of the vinyl aspect of it reminds me of the nintendo switch i've mentioned the details about why i love this one so much um on the previous video but you know you've got the neon red of side a and b also parts one and two of the record because it was a concept album and they thought you know what this is going to be this is going to be a record it's not going to be a collection of singles and some filler tracks this is a record um so they fully like doubled down on it and uh parts three and four also sides c and d are in this uh baby blue um neon blue the, the other joy con on the switch um blue so we've had the great depression by as it is Here's the Great Depression reimagined by as it is. Again, it's a double gatefold. But yeah, so let's actually look at the vinyl part. So, you know, sides A and B, we've got this bright yellow, like, hurts to look at kind of like thing. I do believe it glows in the dark, but um, I have no confirmation of that. But the concept behind this record is just Patty Walters, the singer of, of as it is, um, and the producer of this ver variation of the Great Depression. Um, he was just trying to see what would happen if you made the Great Depression differently, and this is side C and D. Remember this, because this will become relevant later on. Bang Bang Romeo, A Heartbreaker's Guide to the Galaxy. This is a, a record that I was waiting a very long time for. By my friends Richard, Stars and Ross, Bang Bang Romeo, Doncaster Band. Um, their debut album, it's on uh, black vinyl. The only thing that sort of like saddens me about it is the physical vinyl variation is different to the um, streaming version because it's got a different track like there are some tracks that are kind of left off which kind of saddens me a bit because my favourite one didn't quite make it to the vinyl variant my favourite one being Beautiful World but I do just really like like the cover's really iconic the um, like you know the graphic work going on on this is you know I love it it's fantastic it's brilliant so yeah there's a band for you next up we've got Dave Giles Tennessee in 48th really good album. There was a lot of um, fan involvement in the finances of getting Dave to a position to, you know, go and film it. It's a, it's another gatefold. I don't believe it's a double because this one is, yeah, it's the terminology. I don't think it's a double gatefold because it, you know, there is no double final here. I got this live when he came to play in Huddersfield at Small Seeds? Yeah, Small Seeds. And, you know, it's a decent vinyl. Again, black. We've reached a point where we're talking about signed vinyl now. The Golden Age of Not Even Trying by Dead, signed by the band. It was kind of sad. It's their only album and they broke up after releasing it. Black Vinyl, I've already mentioned all of this in the previous video, but now I just, the whole kind of like soundscape and attitude towards this record sounds like, you know, a band that were like, right, we can make, we can make a record here. And I'm glad they did because The Golden Age of Not Even Trying is one of my favorite um, records I own. I listen to it regularly and if you haven't already, you should definitely check out Wargasm, Sam's band. Come to the first 12 inch LP, Dodie, uh, what's this one called again? Human. It's a weird one, Dodie, I never used to like it, and then I started hearing Monster on the radio, and I was like, no, this is, this is a jam, so I went back and listened through her entire discography, um, which also, you know, included buying this vinyl, and I was like, I've slept on you, this is, you're actually, you know, decent, and yeah, just standard black vinyl. But you know, a nice 12 inch EP, but yeah, just really nice. It's, not, it's nice having something to hold. Okay, this, this Elton John by Elton John was a charity shop find and I really like it. I don't think it's the debut album, but it's the first album that, you know, most people tend to recognize. You know, you've got your song, you've got Take Me To The Pilot, um, the Border Song, um, The King Must Die, you know, and it's Elton John, Benny Talpin, this is, this is the record, basically. But yeah, it was a charity shop find, hence why it just looks so, it looks old. But like, you know, it's thin. I, I do 
I don't know. I don't think it's. I don't think it's a first edition by print, but I haven't seen anything to say that it's not like you know classic vinyl. And whilst not really my favourite Elton John record, I'm glad I did find it because it is good and it sounds good as well, and that's what's important. This one was a Christmas present. Elton John, greatest hits. Um, this has got everything that you need, really. I don't even really need that record because this one's got your song. Um, Daniel, Hunky Cat, Goodbye Yellow Bit Road, Saturday Night's Alright for Fighting, uh, Rocket Man, Candle in the Wind, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, Border Song and Crocodile Rock. Like there's only really one or two songs off that record that, are, that aren't on this. So this just covers everything. It's a really nice record. Classic vinyl, it's very thin, it's very flimsy. It's the kind of thing that you notice when you compare it to the heavyweight vinyls and stuff like that. But yeah, no, it's a really good Elton John collection of songs here. Um, without having to purchase diamond. Not that I'm against that, but you know, this is good. Okay, we've got the HMV exclusive of Emma Blackery's Villains. A really good record, a fantastic record actually, to be honest. Um, on translucent yellow vinyl, you know. Can't quite see you through it. I can see you through it if I look through this bit. Wholeheartedly recommend it. Um, personally, I'm not too into her newer stuff that she's done since this. Um, I've got a copy of Cute Without You, which I do quite like, but personally just the arms open, oh, what's it called? Um, just the Wolves musical aesthetic hasn't really been for me. She is teasing a new single called Blossom, which, you know, I've got my fingers crossed for to be, you know, something that I vibe with. Um, but we'll, fi we'll find out when it gets released. But, you know, other than that, uh, Villains is... A def is definitely something that you should have in your catalog. This was a record I was really struggling to get into my collection. Enter Shikari, Take to the Skies. It's the 2020 reprint. Gatefold. I opened this in a week ago because I got it. But it's a double uh, vinyl. Is it? Is it a double vinyl? Or are you lying to me? It's a double vinyl. And it's on this really nice, like, um, splatter effect. Pink and white. Yeah, Take to the Skies is not my favourite. Enter Shikari album, um, but it is their first, you know, record as a band. The second vinyl as well, same, pink and white splatter. And then the album that I got previously before that, Enter Shikari Common Dreads. What was this on? This is on a glow in the dark um, red splatter vinyl, which is really cool. I think that's, I think that's awesome. Like having a glow in the dark variant of vinyl, and it's a vinyl which, you know, this is only the second pressing because it's been like, you know, everyone wants a second pressing, but it just, you know, doesn't really happen a lot. And I'm breaking my order a bit here, but this was like included with the vinyl, um, Tribalism and Thumper, just like a double, is it a double A side? It's, it's something. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's just really nice to get given that as well at the same time. So then we've got Enter Shikari, a flash flood of color. Um, this one is on a, yellowy ready um variant and i do really like this this is a really nice color like combination i think but no, i do really like this it's one of the few shikari records that i've got that isn't a foldy out one so the mind sweep uh, i bought this off the shikari site when it was blue friday because they did blue friday instead of black friday and i really like it and it's on this blue like heavyweight stuff with like you can see it there's a different sort of like you know, intensity of the blue, like that sort of swaps around here and there. And also, do just ignore what I just said about a flash flood being a gatefold, because this isn't a gatefold either, and neither is the spark. So I basically lied. Second EP of this list, Enter Shikari, Live Slow Dial. This is the second pressing. I did find the first pressing alongside the Minesuite for uh, Black slash Blue Friday. However, the website hadn't updated to say it was out of stock. So I got the second pressing when that eventually came around. But it would be nice to have the first pressing. But I do really like this, you know, it's um, 45 RPM and it's good. It's good, out. it's a good EP. Um, I think one of my favourite tracks on it is the Paddington Frisk, but nobody else likes that. So then we come along to The Spark. This was the album that really got me into Enter Shikari. Kind of slept on Enter Shikari and was introduced to them by some friends. And then when this album came out, I was like, right, cool, I'm gonna listen to it. I'm gonna, you know, get involved in the hype train and stuff like that. It comes on this grey silver, um, like 
you know, print. And as I mentioned in the 2018 video, what I love most about this one is that it comes with these. So there's like lyric sheets in here, which are all done to like the kind of aesthetic of the album um, and stuff like that I showed you in the last one. So if you want to go and see what these look like, go and make sure you watch that previous video. So that was where my Antichikari collection ended in 2018. Now I've got Live at Ali Pali 2, um, taken from the uh, Spark tour. Um, I went to this tour, but I went to Manchester Day. It's a double gatefold, um, again, and if I remember correctly, and I believe I am remembering correctly, it's kind of like a Pokeball. Um, yeah, the print is a very Pokeball-esque. I don't know if that's coincidental or if it's on purpose, but either way, I love it, and that's the main reason why I got this variant. Side three and four is also uh, Pokeball <laughs> colours. I've got to catch them all. I've listened to this live album a lot and I really like it. I haven't actually opened my copy of Nothing Is True and Everything Is Possible by Enter Shikari. Mainly because we have one, two, three, four, five. Um, we have six vinyl copies of this in this house. This one's mine. These five are Beth's. She also has the entire cassette variation um, and a test pressing. So I just haven't got around to listening to my variant yet. It's the Dear Future Historians variant, so this is gold and white vinyl. Um, and I'm keeping it closed until I actually have a reason to listen to it myself. It's staying closed. That Intishikari section was shorter in 2018. Hell, this video was shorter in 2018. Okay, so one of two copies of Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes Blossom. This one is the first variant. Uh, it's a limited edition spray paint vinyl on green with black. Um, and all of the variants that I've seen of this record and um, the blacks kind of like spray painty stuff is all different. Um, it's all like, you know, I've seen some where it's like all the way around. I've seen some where it's just like a strip across parts of it. And I just think that's really cool that like every variant of this record is actually different. Yeah, so this variant is five years old. This variant of Blossom is a month old. It's the Blossom Deluxe 2020 like repress. It's got a whole new, well, a whole new, it's got a whole other side of track listing now and some uh, bonus tracks down there as well. Signed, importantly. And this is the vinyl. So it's, you know, half see-through, half orange. Sides C and D are um, black and orange. And I really like this one a bit more than the see-through one. But I still haven't quite given this record a listen yet because, well, it came out recently and I've just not really been in a vinyl mood. You know, it just hits differently on vinyl. This one wasn't only one of my first uh, records, it was also my first Frank Carter record. I went to see Frank Carter having only really heard this record. <laughs> but yeah, it's a uh, fold out uh, again um, and it's on entirely see-through vinyl. I mentioned it in the previous video, something very special about what's been hand uh, etched into the like inner bit here and if you want to know what that is go and watch the last video. And then one of my favourite parts of this collection, uh, the Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes Brixton 23 um, live record. I've had this since it was available to pre-order. Um, it folds out three ways. It's fucking beautiful. Um, this is Frank and Dean at Brixton. I, this is another tour I went to, but I saw them at the Manchester Day. Uh, and it's got three vinyl, six sides. Disc one is black. Disc two is a white vinyl. And keeping with the colour scheme of this album, disc three is baby pink. But yeah, as I mentioned in the 2018 video, the one thing that kind of, you know, irks me about this album is the lack of spaces. They're all, it's all underscores. Apart from for Modern Ruin and the song titles. That's kind of weird. I've just noticed that. So since then, I've now got a signed copy of End of Suffering with this really cool sleeve, actually. But yeah, no, End of Suffering, it's a double fold out. Well, not a fold out, it, it's, a, it's a fold out again. Um, it's a, it's one of, I got one of the variants. I got a really cool variant, actually. I got this yellowy, greeny, splattery thing, um, and I really like it. I, d I do find it kind of strange that this is the thing that's signed rather than like, you know, signing this. But I, if they were going to use this, I, you know, figure, okay, sign this then, I guess. Like, because that's the only thing that I ever really care about. If it's going to be signed, make it signed somewhere that's visible. You can't get more visible than that. And this is a This Year Record Store Day exclusive, uh, Frank Cartner Out Snakes Live to Vinyl. Um, I say exclusive, uh, if you're also at the recording session, you 
could get a copy of this, I believe. But yeah, recorded live to vinyl at Metropolis Studios, 14th of December 2019. I've seen lots of photos from this, it looks very, it looks really cool. It's just an acoustic thing of Frank and Dean on this nice blue vinyl. Um, it's a bit smaller than, you know, your usual 12 inch. I don't know how big this actually is. It's very nice. It's just very nice. What more can I say about it? It's very nice. Unfortunately, the cover itself has like a little blemish from like the way that it was packaged and it's all like, it's been sealed with some tape and the tape's still sticky now. So this is We Are Ill by Ill. Um, they are a Manchester-y based female empowerment band. Let's call it that. I really like it. It's a blue record. I got it, I think, from the band's... Maybe it was a big cartel? I'm not sure. Um, they're a band I would very much like to see live because I've heard that there are some really interesting things that go on live, but you know, I fully, fully endorse this record. It's an unusual listen, but you should definitely listen to the things that they are saying as well, because that's important. It's very important. That's kind of the point of this kind of record. I've got the La La Land soundtrack on vinyl. Um, it's just a, your basic black kind of heavyweight record. As with the film, the soundtrack, in it, even in its physical variation, is kind of just a throwback to you know, the classic jazz records and stuff like that, you know, even down to its design. But yeah, this, according to Discogs, is quite hard to get a hold of, so I'm quite glad I've got a copy of it, actually. As I'm going through, let's just stop and talk about McFly, obviously. Um, the single on the front, you've obviously got obviously. On the B-side, you've got Interview Part 2. I made a joke about that last time. Um, and then I've also got this Record Store Day exclusive of The Heart Never Lies by McFly, In the Shape of a Heart. It's been signed, so it doesn't actually run properly because it skips where you know people have written over it, which is unfortunate, but that's what the B-side's for. <laughs> and for both of those, I lack cases, so I just keep them together in the sleeve. So here's my latest. An actual McFly record on vinyl. Uh, Young Dumb Thrills, their sixth studio record. No one counts the Lost Songs as a record. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, gatefold. It's just a single vinyl and it's bright pink. I've not actually listened to the vinyl of it yet. Um, I would quite like to because hearing a McFly record on vinyl is something that I've always wanted to do because I never thought it would happen. Um, so now I just need them to make their discography available on vinyl and I will buy it. I might need to set up a GoFundMe for that though. So now we're getting into predictable territory. Uh, My Comic Romance, The Black Parade um, with a different, completely different variation to its artwork, to the CD, because um, obviously that's not the, that's not what you see on the front of the CD version of the Black Parade, and it's not what you see on the streaming platforms version of Black Parade either. And it's just a double uh, gatefold, um, both on black heavyweight vinyl. Then next up on blue vinyl, we've got Neck Deep, Life's Not Out To Get You. This one falls out as well, just to give you a bit more of a, you know, um, stroke. It is a very graphical, like, you know, um, sleeve and stuff like that. But yeah, it's on this really nice blue. Um, I think I prefer the... I definitely prefer the blue of um, the other blue records that I've got. But, you know, it, it is nice. It's just, it feels a bit Crayola. And then we come to the Neck Deep album I actually prefer. The Peace and the Panic. Uh, again, it's a folding one. It gives you a bit more of the artwork of the album. Um, this one's much less of a, you know, graphical stroke, but it's on white vinyl, and I really like that. Um, it's one of the few whites that I've got. So, Noel Gallagher, High Flying Birds, self-titled uh, debut album um, on a standard, you know, black vinyl, just bought from HMV. Uh, bought it on my birthday whilst I was killing time. But yeah, you know, it folded out, it's really nice. It's really aesthetically pleasing, all these, you know, photos and stuff. And that's followed by Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds Chasing Yesterday. I still don't know who this guy is, um, but it's on, you know, it's just on a classic black heavyweight vinyl. Um, but it's really nice to look at. It's not as nice to look at as the self-titled uh, record, because there's a lot less going on. This is a decent album, I would say so. Now after that prequel, we've got Oasis, um, definitely maybe. Uh, it's a double gatefold vinyl uh, on black vinyl uh, that there has since been a anniversary version which I believe is on silver vinyl. The same goes for uh, 
What's the Story of Morning Glory, and I do just like having my own version. I just like having a version, to be honest. Yeah, what can I say? It's it's an Oasis record, and I listen to it every now and then. I also have what is undeniably one of the greatest rock records of all time, um, Oasis, What's the Story of Morning Glory. One of the things that I love about these um, vinyl reissues of the Oasis ones is that their uh, coding is Our Kid LP, um, which is obviously, you know, how Mancunians refer to each other. But yeah, this one folds three times, actually. But this one's just to give it something extra. I do appreciate this. And that, this one, again, is on standard black heavyweight vinyl, which is basically the default of uh, modern records, should we say. So, Panic at the Disco, a few of you can't sweat out. Arguably the best Panic at the Disco record. Uh, it's really iconic artwork as well. Um, it's just on a standard black vinyl. As much as I love Panic as a band, if they'd stopped at this, I also would have been happy. It's the best Panic album. Controversial. I feel like a vinyl collection isn't complete without at least one Queen LP. Um, this is obviously Queen's greatest hits. Double Gatefold, I got it for Christmas. It's got all the classics that you will ever need. I do think Queen 2, uh, the Queen Greatest Hits number 2, is possibly a better album, like in terms of the variety, but everyone everyone hears those Queen ones. What about the ones that people don't hear a lot? You know, you know, they're all really good songs. I do like this though, you know, and again, it's on black heavyweight vinyl. And on to the last two 12 inches, we've got uh, Van Halen, Van Halen. I should probably mention Rest in Peace, Eddie. Uh, yeah, this is old, thin, flimsy, and look at that Warner Brothers Records logo. I'm really glad I found this in a charity shop, um, just to have as part of a collection, but it's not really an album I listen to a lot. And the last of the 12 inches, another charity shop find, Wagner, um, purely bought for the prelude to Tristan and Isolde, which I studied at college. But yeah, black vinyl, not heavyweight. For the price I paid, which was 99p, just having Tristan and Isolde, the prelude, in my collection was worth it. So those are the records and, and some of the EPs. Let's talk through the singles and the seven inches, basically. So you know that as it is cover that I told you to remember. Well, how's that? Uh, Denial Reimagined. It came out of nowhere as it is. We're just like, right, cool. We're just going to do each side of the um, vinyl, but differently. And, you know, I've got most of the collection. They haven't actually released the final variant, which I think is really annoying. But yeah, um, so part two, Reimagined. On this, it's a really nice variant. Turns out I've got two copies of this one. I must have got both versions, but yeah. They did two variants of each one, if I remember correctly. And here's part three of four, because part four doesn't exist yet. But this one apparently also glows in the dark. So then we've got another Record Store Day exclusive, Bang Bang Romeo, uh, Cemetery, and their cover of Radiohead's Creep. Actually has its own little sleeve and stuff. Really nice, black vinyl, um, sounds really good as well. Definitely something that I was glad I was able to get a hold of. All of these uh, names and stuff on in the inner bits are record stores, which is really cool. So part of my mum's collection, but I adopted it. The Bee Gees, Tragedy. It's not a tragedy, it's one of the greatest songs ever made. Back over to my collection, Brian May, Driven By You. Just a seven inch single, very dusty. It's all right. He's, he's not had the greatest solo career, let's say. This one's weird. This is a flexi disc. Uh, Frank Cartner out next Crowbar. I've got two copies of this actually. I got given it a gig because I'd pre-ordered End of Suffering. And it's just like, it's just plastic. And I can do this as much as I want and it will still stay, you know, as a record and it plays. It makes no sense, but it works. It's fantastic. Liam Gallagher, Wall of Glass, second print. The back of it, you know, just has the lyrics of, you know, Wall of Glass. Whereas the front is obviously the A side, and it's just in a very Liam Gallagher esque blank, you know, case. Again, part of my mum's collection Queen, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, with the live version of We Will Rock You as the B side. Another Queen, Friends Will Be Friends, with Seven Seas of Rye as the B side. And the only Queen single I've ever bought myself, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. And these are the days of our lives as part of an AIDS, like, you know, benefit. It's really cool, that, I think. Back to my mum's again. The specials, what is it again? Too Much Too Young. It's really the only one that I've listened to on that two turn records. Um, getting towards the end, Vamp, Peace and Love, um, on this nice red variant, actually. 
Uh, I got this free from a PR company because it was being sent to Radio Hood and they sent a couple of copies and I was like, well, I want one of these because this is really nice. And finally, again in my mum's collection, Last Christmas by Wham. Um, yeah, it's just, oh man, I don't really know where to begin, but you know, it's Last Christmas, everything she wants on the B side. I think it's a double A side actually. But either way, you know, it's just some Christmas nonsense. It was part of my mum's collection that I ended up adopting as the resident vinyl lover. So I hope you enjoyed that little look at my record collection. As I said at the start of this video, let me know in the comments below what's in your collection, how many have you got, what's your favourite, why is it Why is it your favourite, and what's something that's been evading you for a long time. If you're on Discogs, make sure you go and follow me on that. It's a good way of keeping track of the records that you own, how much they could be worth and stuff like that. It's also a good marketplace for vinyl. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy that. Uh, if you did, do all that to you know YouTube stuff. Like, share, comment, subscribe, etc, etc. Share it with a record lover, share it with a music lover. I've just really enjoyed this conversation about the music that I've got and the music that I love. And I hope you did too. If you're still around at this point, I would assume you did. If you haven't already, please subscribe. As always, I've been Ruby Price and I'll see you next time. Adiós.